Battlefield 6 launched on October 10th 2025 and to be honest it's become one of my favorite games to currently play at the moment. I do play though on I would say a fairly high spec PC but the other day I decided to check what the game's minimum system requirements are and to my surprise I have the exact hardware to match them in my ever so deep hardware collection. So here are Battlefield 6's minimum requirements. From a processor perspective, you'll need either an AMD Ryzen 5 2600 or a Intel Core i5 8400. For our build, we're obviously going with the Ryzen 5 2600 along with the 1600 and 3600, but, but, but I'll get to that, don't worry. Uh, from a memory perspective, you'll need a minimum of 16 gigs of RAM. And for the GPU side of things, you'll need either an AMD Radeon RX 5600 XT from NVIDIA and RTX 2060, and from Intel, that being the Intel Arc A380. Now, what is, does, isn't common, should I say, for all these three GPUs, is they all come with 6 gigs of VRAM. Uh, from a DirectX perspective, it's obviously a DX12 game. And then additionally, you'll need a couple of security features. So for the game to run, you will need TPM 2.0 along with secure boot enabled. This is just for EA's anti-cheat software. So as previously mentioned, I do own several Ryzen 5 chips. When I realized that I owned not just the 2600, but the 1600 and the 3600, I thought, well, why not just test all three of them? Uh, with the GPU, obviously, and the GPU that I've gone with is the Asus ROG Strix RTX 2060, which comes with six gigs of VRAM. So let's take a look at this Asus ROG Strix RTX 2060. So for CUDA cores, it comes with 1920. For video memory, as previously mentioned, it comes with six gigs of GDDR6. So from a clock perspective, it has two modes, OC mode or overclock mode, which takes the boost clock to 1860 megahertz. And then in gaming mode, it takes the boost clock to 1830 megahertz. From a memory interface perspective, it comes in at 192 bits and the memory speed is 14 gigabits per second. As far as PCI Express is concerned, it is a 3.0 device, has a maximum resolution of 7680 by 4320. For display outputs, it comes with two HDMI 2.0B outputs and two display ports 1.4A. From a power perspective, it requires one 8-pin PCIe power cable and the recommended PSU is 500 watts. As far as consumption is concerned, I noticed while gaming I didn't see it go sort of beyond 205, 210 watts um, as I can remember. So yeah, not too power hungry um, in, in, in my honest opinion. Now let's go and compare the three CPUs. So starting with the Ryzen 5 1600, as you can see, the launch year or the year it was released was in 2017. The Ryzen 5 2600 was released in 2018 and the Ryzen 5 3600 in 2019. Now, if you look at the various different architectures and you manufacturing uh, node sizes there, uh, the Ryzen 5 1600 was built on the 14 nanometer process where the 2600 was on the Zen Plus, which is the 12 nanometer process. And then the 3600 is on Zen 2, and that's the seven nanometer process. As far as cores and threads are concerned, they're all the same. For the base clock, it looks like they did an increment of 200 megahertz per uh, version. So for the 1600, it was 3.2. Then for the Ryzen 2600, it was 3.4. And then 3.6 for the 3600. Now from a boost clock perspective, they've done a similar thing, but they've gone by 300 megahertz. So the boost clock on the 1600 came in at 3.6 gigahertz, while the 2600 came in at 3.9 gigahertz, and the 3600 came in at 4.2 gigahertz. Now for L2 cache, both the 1600 and 2600 both come with 16 megs of L3 cache, where the 3600 they took to 32 megs. From a TDP perspective, they all come in at 65 watts. From a PCI Express support, 
um, level here for both the 1600 and 2600. They both only support up to PCIe 3.0, while the Ryzen 5 3600 supports up to PCI Express 4.0. You can see there's a slight difference also in the default memory support. So by default, the 1600 allows you to use DDR4 up to 2666. Now keep in mind, you can obviously go and tweak this and you might have XMP settings, but by default. All right, we're talking the default memory support. So Ryzen 5 2600 comes in at 2933, while the Ryzen 5 3600 comes in at 3200. Now there is a bit of uplift and you'll, you can sort of look at those, you know, the single thread uplift. So between the Ryzen 1600 and 2600, we're talking between 10 and 15 percent. And then between the 3600 and the 1600, we're looking at more of a 25 to 35 percent. And very similar values apply when it comes to multi-threading as well, as you can see the values there. So with that out the way, I just do want to mention I did actually in this build come in with 32 gigs of RAM versus 16 gigs. As I say, that's just what I had lying around, but I've just left the RAM to its default clock. So no XMP profiles here. I want everything at stock. So with that out the way, let's now take a look at the benchmarks. I've done CPU benchmarks and of course, Battlefield 6 benchmarks. So let's jump into it. So I must say, Battlefield 6 is pretty well optimized as far as games are concerned. And um, yeah, who says uh, 8 gigs of VRAM isn't enough? I mean, clearly 6 gigs is clearly enough based on the results we had. I never saw VRAM usage go above 5.7 or 5.8 gigs of VRAM while playing the game. So they've really stuck within that 6 gig limit for, for the, the, the 1080p presets, I must say. Outside of the GPU side of things, the CPUs held up pretty well. I did expect more out of the 2600, in my honest opinion. Um, very close to the 1600. I'm pretty sure, you know, um, I think that L3 cache plays quite, a, quite an important role when it comes to the 3600. Because the 3600, as I say, even in Windows 11, felt snappier. It's definitely a big upgrade between zen and zen plus for, uh, as far as zen 2 cpus are concerned that 3600 still holds its weight today it's it's an impressive cpu and um yeah i'm actually going to be using that uh, using this build what i've actually done is i've actually chucked in an rtx 3060 tr for a build i'm going to leave with my parents that whenever i visit them i just pull it out the cupboard so i mean i've got faith in the 3600 in my honest opinion i, I wasn't expecting it to perform like it did um, based on what I know, based on how I know the 1600 and 2600 performed. The 3600 I did buy actually not that long ago, but I just haven't bothered to use it until now. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give us a thumbs up and please consider subscribing. Let's hit that 1000 subscriber mark. I mean, come on guys. I get thousands of views on my videos, right? Not all of them. Not all of them. But like no subs. Come on, come on. Help a brother out. Anyways, have a good one. Peace out, cheers, check you on the next one.